Hi, I'm Mark McCarthy from the Star Herald, and today we're talking with Rachel Gonzalez and Father John Sorensen of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and we're talking about the upcoming Guadalupe Festival and Mexican dinner. So first off, explain to us what the Guadalupe Fiesta is and what's, what's it celebrating. Well, uh, so, I'm, so I'm pastor of Our Lady of Guadalupe Church, but I'm also director of the Guadalupe Center, and the, the annual fiesta is a fundraiser for the Guadalupe Center, which is a community center, uh, and it's open to everyone. It's not just uh, you know, like the church is for, for religion and for us, etc. The community center, we use it as well, but it is a, it's for the whole community. It's, it was built for the, the particularly southeast Scotts Bluff back in the day, and now it really serves on many more people. But the annual fiesta is something that we've been doing since the current Guadalupe Center was built. Uh, it was began as a fundraiser to help build it in 1969, which is what, is that 50 years ago now? Yes. 50, 50, 50 years, years we've been doing the, the set. It was called an annual dinner for a while, and we made it the annual fiesta, because fiestas are more fun than dinners, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and it's a, you know just a, a Mexican dinner plate and some entertainment and whatnot, and, uh, it's been there at, at the Guadalupe Center now for, well, since 1969. How many people are involved with organizing the event? Organization, there's probably between 10 to 12 people, uh, depending. Now, when the actual dinner, the actual date of the dinner, there'll be probably 40 people involved. Yeah, but the actual, just to set it up, is probably anywhere from 10 to 12 people. And that's for people decorating and yeah, we have and we have subcommittees of decorating and uh, food committees and uh, people that go out soliciting for silent auction items and entertainment and just all types of things. So, a lot of, a lot of subcommittees. <laughs> <laughs> you touched on it a little bit just now, but for people who aren't familiar with the fiesta, tell us a little bit about some of the activities that will be going on. Well, we'll have some entertainment uh, throughout the day. It starts at 11 o'clock and it ends at 2. And uh, we have a DJ and then we have the Guadalupe, I don't know if you've ever heard, Guadalupano uh, dancers performing. Um, uh, hopefully we're going to have a couple of vocalists there as well. So we have, you know, lots of times people will volunteer to go up and just kind of do a karaoke type. Thing. Okay. So it'll be fun. It'll be it'll be fun for everybody. Tell us a little bit more about the dancers and what makes them so special. Oh, the Guadalupanos. You know, I was uh, one of the original Guadalupano dancers, so that's been. I'm not going to say my age. <laughs> that was a while ago, five or six <laughs> yes, years ago, right? Yes, right. It's, so it's been uh, in existence. Uh, Marianne Shockley has been um, the organizer for that uh, for quite some time as well. You know, but um, oh gosh, it was. It's been, it, they've been together for quite some time, you know, different, different kids, I mean, you know, different age groups and stuff, but, you know, they're pretty entertaining and they're well known throughout, uh, probably a three-state area, at least. How do the kids get involved in it? Oh, parents mostly, I think, and some of them, they've seen, uh, you know, the dancer perform and then they just want to join, so they, mm -hmm. they you know, call in and start going to practices and stuff like that. So. Okay. So what are your some, some of your favorite activities during the fiesta? Well, my favorite activity is I put on my my, <laughs> my charro outfit, uh, you know, a traditional mariachi uh, outfit, etc. I kind of have my collar there as well, but, you know, and <laughs> a big sombrero, and people are like, oh, padre, oh, you know, el muy charro, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and I just go meet and greet, you know, press the flesh, kiss babies, things like that. Um, and it's just, I, and I really love to see the community come down. Uh, this is this is just an event. Uh, it's a community event. It's for the community center, and the community really comes down. I see people that maybe I only see that one time a year, or maybe you just a couple times see them in the store or something the rest of the year uh, really come down and enjoy it and that that's kind of my favorite thing I eventually do sit down and eat and of course I love Mexican food but I eat Mexican food twice a day seven days a week you know <laughs> um, and it is good food that we have I just I just love to see the people down there and go greet and say thanks for coming to support the center and the, and the work that we do here what about you what do you enjoy the people I enjoy seeing people that, you know, you don't, see, like Father said, you don't see everybody all the time, you know, throughout the year, so when they do come out, I, that's what I enjoy, the interaction and mm -hmm. the music, 
And uh, the food, of course. I think everything, everything about it, is just, it's just a fun day. We know that the food is one of the key parts of the fiesta and everyone raves about it. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about it? Well, they're all, it's all homemade. We have, again, we have subcommittees for each item and um, very authentic uh, food. You know, it's, it's kind of a two, well, more like a three day process for that food preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, but it's, it's, it's delicious. I mean, I hope everybody comes out and, and tries the food because it, it really is um, authentic Mexican food. So. And, it's, and it's an enchilada and a taco, mm -hmm. pork chili, rice and beans, which sounds like, you know, basic Mexican fare. Mm -hmm. But again, this is, this is handmade mm -hmm. uh, from people who this is what they make in their home for their family. Mm -hmm. uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, I, I, I go ahead and help you put on, you definitely put on the gloves when you're working <laughs> with the chilies. Right, oh but yes. But you gotta take the dried chilies, you gotta soak them overnight, mm -hmm. and then you, 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 you pull them apart to get the seeds out because you don't want it too spicy. You get the mm -hmm. seeds out and then you, and then you put it in, we had to get an industrial blender mm -hmm. to, to be able to cut this stuff up and blend it to, to make the salsa and you put in the spices. And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a big process. It is. But with a longer process, it's better food, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Just like homemade bread versus you know, something you get at the store. It's, it's, there's something about the whole process of making it that just you know, it gives a richness to the flavors. Right. Mm -hmm. So were these secret recipes that have been passed down through generations? And uh, you know, I think every everybody that's ever helped has their own uh, way of cooking the food. So. Maybe. <laughs> Possibility that... You know, I'm, I'm willing to guess that there is not a recipe because, it's, you know, I, I've watched, I've watched them and they just do it. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, take a little taste and, mm, okay, it needs, <laughs> right. needs this. And, and they, yeah. get, they get it just right. That's true. In a way That's that so true, I couldn't. I could taste it and be like, I don't know what it needs. Good enough. Uh -huh. <laughs> but they know exactly what it needs. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of a... Kind of a we should we should charge admission to have, have people come to and watch, watch, watch the naked. Mm -hmm. Actually, that would be a good idea. idea. Well, there, there you go. Yes. Fundraiser for next year. <laughs> a glass. We need a glass window there. That's yeah. yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the other activities that are at the Guadalupe Center throughout the year, and that Arlita Guadalupe is involved in? So, one of uh, we so we partner with a number of different organizations. We've had a very long-standing. Uh, is it almost 20 years at WNCC? We, well, I was with WCC for 24 years, so and we were. With, I mean, know, since the, the early 90s, at least, each, yeah, for 24. Um, you know, um, WCC has been a big partner of ours for a long time, and so you know, with them down there, there are English as a second language classes that are offered both in the morning and evening, as well as you can get your GED um, down there, and there classes offered for that. And uh, I think you can do that elsewhere in town, but the, right. they they really they come down to the center because. They're reaching into into that that neighborhood and that community mm -hmm. there, which might not otherwise feel comfortable going elsewhere. And it's it's a big thing, and we're really grateful to WCC for that. Um, what else do we have at the center? We have uh, a, the computer lab is open to the public for mm -hmm. people to use down there. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the gymnasium sometimes ho sometimes hosts events. Guadalupe mm -hmm. Boxing Club, mm -hmm. uh, just like the Guadalupanos Folklorico dancers, they're they're a separate entity. They're not owned by the center or the church. Um, but they they have a lot of kids that would maybe otherwise get into some trouble and they, they give them some real good discipline uh, in, the, in the boxing. We have a long tradition that goes back to even before oh the current goodness, yes. center was built it's been a long time, yeah, 50, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are having another smoker here later this month. A smoker is a boxing tournament. And they had one in March, and it was a rousing success. We had boxers from way out of state, like Michigan, came mm -hmm. to box in this smoking tournament. Um, Good. Um, we have a number of community events that uh, use the kitchen because it's a commercial kitchen, commercial grade kitchen. Some, some, even there's one business that rents it because they, they do some canning and operating in there. Uh, we've had a lot of community meetings. So you, I don't know if you've seen the community upgrades along East Overland. Mm -hmm. uh, the city has been very gracious with those facade grants. A lot of those community meetings and organizing uh, that that happened at the center. It's just it's a community center that's open for things. Uh, we've had some concerned parent meetings for and, you know uh, concerned about bullying in the schools. And it's just a place that that's open for 
people to come and be able to mm -hmm. feel comfortable that they can express themselves or receive education. Mm -hmm. So, so we, a little bit of what we do. Between the revitalization on East Overland and all the stuff going on at the Guadalupe Center, what does that say about the involvement of the, the community in the area? I have to say, uh, every time that we have a meeting, I'm just, I'm just so impressed. Um, people have a great love for the, the neighborhood and the community and for Scotts Bluff. Mm -hmm. They really have a desire to, to see things get better. And I say, my, in my five years here, I've only seen improvement, 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 improvement in so many ways. Um, people, people really want to build things. And I guess I'm just happy to, that I get to be involved with it. Um, you know, beautiful things that happen in the lives of people and, and the neighborhood and the community. And, and uh, the Lupe Center is thankfully a part of it and, uh, and, and a help in that as well. Uh, what else is happening at the church itself? At the church? Well, I don't know. We're fixing hail damage right now. <laughs> <laughs> As is most of Scott's love. Yes. Yeah, well, we lost a stained yes. glass window even. That's Ooh, ouch. Yeah. 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 Um, no, we'll see. I haven't heard back from insurance. But otherwise, uh, getting ready for classes with the kids, uh, gearing that back up. Just hired a new director of religious education. And, um, looking to, to get the parish council going again. and. Mm. The hail kind of set me back a little bit. You know? uh, I uh, posted a picture of the window that we lost, and the caption was, Oh, hail no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How can people get more involved in the activities, either at the Guadalupe Center or involved in the fiesta? Oh, they can give us a call at the church, 632 uh, 2845, if they want to you know, buy tickets or if they just have any questions or comments or anything, uh, they can talk to myself or father, you know. Um. So I know that WNCC very often is looking for assistance because they have people learning ESL and they have the teachers, but it's mm -hmm. all, it's really helpful to have someone as an assistant just right. to kind of coach people as they're working. They, they got their little headphones on, they're on the computer, and so they're saying things into the microphone, and they're hearing things, you know, just, mm -hmm. as well as then the in-class portion with the professor. Uh, but like an extra like little side tutor, someone that knows a little English and Spanish can assist with that. That's mm -hmm. always helpful. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, uh, the, the boxing club, they, they like to have coaches, mm -hmm. coaches for the kids. Um, that's a good way as well. But mm -hmm. of course, for the fiesta itself, called Rachel, right. the church office, the, so the center doesn't have any employees. It's all yeah. oh, the okay. church's employees that on the side, you know, mm -hmm. I, I run the church, and then on the side, I'm <laughs> director of the center. But right. uh, call the church office, and we can we can get you connected with Rachel, or be able to serve on that day, get you signed up, etc. Mm -hmm. So, aside from the fiesta, what other means do you have for raising funds for the Guadalupe Center? So we have we have had in the past a number of 5K races, which kind of fits in with our, our one of our goals at the center is to improve community wellness. Um, and health, and uh, so 5K events, th those have always been kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and those have been fundraisers, as well as then the, this, the Guadalupe Boxing Club, the Smoker, has been a really good fundraiser as well. Um, they brought in a lot of people, charged a little admission, and then the part of the assistance that each partner that uses the center assists with, you know, some, some of the upkeep of the center, then they kind of split those funds a little bit, and so the center receive from that and will from the one later this month as well. Okay. And, and we are happy to rent the center <laughs> for, for weddings, parties, community events, etc. as well. You can call us for, for rental information. Nicely done. <laughs> so the Guadalupe Fiesta coming up September 15th mm -hmm. from 11 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And carry out until 3. Mm -hmm. Carry out until 3 at the Guadalupe Center. 1200 East 9th Street in Scotts Bluff. Yep, right. And again, we're with Rachel Gonzalez and Father Sorensen. Thankfully, thank you for coming in and thank you for your time. Glad to be thank here. You.